Good day YouTube. Bit of a sad day today. The car's so close to its first drive. But I've got to tell you, I've got to confess that I think, and I'm looking at this, and it looks like I think it may be cross-threaded. I've tried to tighten it up a little bit more. And now it's just free spinning. So I mean this job's not a hard job by any means but I've got fresh oil in there so I'm gonna have to dump that and I'm thinking about keeping it because it's actually you know some good Nulon oil that I'm using and I've got to drop the coolant again coolant I'm not you know coolant I've got heaps of coolant um, but I'm gonna try and catch the oil if I can and then I'm gonna try and uh, <coughs> right I'm back there's no way um, for me to fix this, unfortunately, and it's not just the oil cooler. If it was, then it'd be an easy fix, but it's actually the whole unit that connects up to the um, PCV. So I'm going to have to take all this shit out, man. Biggest pain in the bum. Um, so there's one, two, three... And then four behind. So look, this I've got this spare unit that I just cleaned. Alrighty guys, so to remove all of this, you're gonna have to remove the oil filter housing. You're gonna need to remove the oil cooler as well. Then there's four bolts. Um, I need a 27 millimeter socket, so I'll get that tomorrow. Um, I think that's it. There's a bracket, 13 mm bracket, which I'll take off. Cross threaded the oil, oil feed. So, definitely fun times, guys. New day, new solution. So, I went to Super Cheap Auto to get some specialized socket heads for this particular. Uh, to get the um, oil cooler uh, off, so what that means is I'm going to need to get this. Don't mind all the mess around here. When you're working on such a big project, this is going to happen. So this is going to go on top of the oil cooler right so the idea is that is on the oil cooler like that but you can't get any bits on it or well, you can't get a yeah i couldn't get my um adjustable um spanner on it so i went to the shops to get um a socket to get it off So to get that off, it's just there, and make sure it's the right way. Now I might need to get an extension here. Uh, about, I did get it off, um, so I'll explain what I did. And the only reason why I'm getting it off is because I stripped this this bastard of a piece. And that's because my banjo bolt I couldn't get on. Um, because of the aircon um, hose, so it's supposed to go on like that. But I had rounded that uh, that son of a gun out. So yeah, old gasket. So what I'm gonna do, and this looks very much the same. Just to compare it, that's the Audi A4 1.8T. Straight from the old engine, the, the wreck that I have, or not the wreck, but the, uh, the busted engine. And I don't know if the sensor is the same. Like that's one pin. That's also one pin. It looks the same. I might check if the... Uh, 
so it's a F3O F3O so even yeah everything's the same like it's it's uh same part number so I in the end I the only thing that was um that I didn't get was the eight uh, 10 millimeter bolt that holds the bracket for the harness that this harness here there's a little bracket that bolts onto it now I'm going to go in and clean all this up all the red uh, gasket and I'm going to use some RTV around it um, much like how I use RTV for the sump um, so I'm going to go through and brake clean all this out and um, oh man all the oils dropped down again so that's going to be a pain in the ass clean that up first and then clean up the car all right i'm just going through with the screwdriver and i'm going to just clean all the old gasket off and then i'm going to brake clean it and yeah put the old uh the new one back on so that's where i'm at the moment just doing some cleaning work so the surface down there is all primed and ready to go I'm now going to uh, put the gasket on the back of this. Alright, just thin, using my hand and just smearing it on, like how I did with the, um, the sump. So I'll do one now. I'll do it and then I'll show you what that looks like. Alrighty, so. That's the gasket on, light thin layer, and now I'm going to pop this on loosely and just do it um, every corner, uh, slowly but surely. So I'm going to now do this methodically and give it a good wipe first before I do it. Alrighty, so we pretty much got uh, the bottom two nuts on. I'm going to get these two 10 millimeters on. I've got the PCB uh, elbow on already. Just need to put this, those two nuts, that support, that support. And the infamous, the reason why I actually rounded out the, uh, was because uh, the oil field was because this didn't give me a lot of room. So I'm going to have to bend it out of the way, I think, because, you know, I'm not going to go through this again. Even though it wasn't that bad of a job, I, I'm just, I think I'm just wanting to get the car back on the road. So yeah, just, just, the, you know, getting to the last part of the, uh, the turbo swap and then all of a sudden, you know, you have to swap a uh, oil coolant exchanger unit, whatever the fuck it's called. But anyway, so I'm going to tighten it up now, make sure I don't strip these out. And um, yeah, it's gonna come along. So that's hand tight. And um, yeah. All right, I got the bolt on without snapping or breaking or doing anything to it. Uh, I got the support brackets on. Now I'm gonna put the oil cooler exchanger. Uh, on and then lastly the oil filter so yeah it's um, painful but it took another you know four hours to fix this three hours easy all right champs it's all in it's all fixed um, I've still got to tighten the banjo bolt but everything else is on uh, oil filter housing that sort of stuff is on uh, sensors are on, brackets are on, dipstick works, PCB works, so just going to get the last final touches. Like that. Uh, always good to have spare parts. Now I didn't expect to to, um, to need to pull any parts off the uh, the old uh, motor, but luckily I did. I didn't scrap it. I was, I was pretty close to scrapping the, uh, the A4 motor, but I think I'm going to take whatever I can off it um, that I might need. 
and then just um, that's what I'll do. I'll send it on its way. So luckily for me. Hmm. That's it. I need my. Where's it gone, eh? Alright, let me look for it and come back. Guys, that's the end of the saga. It is on. I'm pretty confident that that's going to seal because it went on properly. Uh, I had to do a mod on this dipstick to, to crack down below, so I've ordered a new one. But until then, repaired, sealed. And yeah, this is. Like, this is it. This is the pain that caused me three hours, four hours delay in trying to fix it, removing it in the end, and, you know, multi-step, you got to take a few things off, oil cooler, then you can take this off afterwards, there's a few brackets on, it's only four bolts, but the last bolt is covered by the um, oil filter, so you do have to drop the oil and you have to drop the coolant unfortunately but that's just what it takes man so what do you do and it's gonna make a shit mess everywhere it's one of those dirty jobs you know but the good thing is I got to take put in a, a, a refurbed refurbished one I cleaned it out and if you look at it it's nice and uh, it's nice and shiny down there it's like a brand new part or newish part you know it just doesn't look all crusty and and uh, I didn't get a chance to clean the uh, the oil cooler that's already in here because it was still attached to the lines. I didn't want to undo, I didn't feel like undoing the uh, the lines to, just to clean it. So I left it on, but all of that is new. And um, yeah, that's the uh, silver lining, I suppose. So yeah, look, I'm going to end it here. Um, thanks everyone for watching. I'll probably take a photo of that there but that's all thanks a lot for watching make sure you subscribe and uh, see you in the next video all right if you've been watching the video to now till now you'll see at the end that it absolutely pissed out oil and um, what I have to fix I'll make another video on but I fixed it and uh, two tries to take uh, all of this out remove it seal it still was leaking oil and the car wouldn't start and that's because the where's my ah so that's because when i reinstalled the uh the oil filter housing majiggy whatever it's called i actually pinched the wire in up uh into it and i can understand why because naturally the wire wants to stick up and I didn't see that because <clears throat> I, I was installing it from the top and um, and I put the gasket on and the, you know it didn't seal properly so it just absolutely drained oil out as I turned the car on um, so I resealed it again for the second time and um, yeah I'm gonna see now if it's going to uh, work I know it starts because I just tried it
that Hayat 4 is now installed. All the say the swap is successful whether it drives or not it's a different matter the you know physical technical swap is done and uh, the next video you'll see is me giving it a test drive and maybe throwing a different tune or different tunes on it to see uh, how well it'll run all right guys one more quick video just to show you what I've done uh, so with the AGU, the pipes going down to the intercooler is actually quite, um, I'll say, close, real close. So I'm not liking this setup at all, but I've managed to extend the boost pipes up a little bit for more clearance. And um, yeah, there's a bit of a gap here, but there's a lot of... There's a lot of heat here, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I'm going to try and maybe tie this back a bit. But I've extended that. Right, I've extended that by another good 50 centimetres. And, yeah, that's not... That's not going to touch anything, giving it a bit more space. And um, yeah, that's what I've had to do so far. So, one more quick solution of tying this back a bit or moving this back a bit would give me better clearance somehow, like that. So, yeah, just trying to find a solution for that. But yeah, for the most part, it's done. Alright guys, one more quick video just to show you what I've done. Uh, so with the AGU, the pipes going down to the intercooler is actually quite, um, I'll say, close. Real close. So I'm not liking this setup at all, but I've managed to extend the boost pipes up a little bit. For more clearance and um, yeah there's a bit of a gap here but there's a lot of there's a lot of heat here you know what I mean so yeah I'm gonna try and maybe tie this back a bit but I've extended that right I've extended that by another good 50 centimeters and yeah, that's not, that's not going to touch anything, giving it a bit more space, and um, yeah, that's what I've had to do so far, so one more quick solution of tying this back a bit, or moving this back a bit, would give me better clearance somehow, like that. So yeah, just trying to find a solution for that. But yeah, for the most part, it's done. Alrighty, guys. As you saw, um, doing a turbo swap is not without its dramas. So if you are going to do anything like this, expect that something is going to go wrong, breaking, um, you know, cross threading. Just yeah, everything. Something's gonna something's gonna break. Um, but you just work through it, you just find a solution, do it, if you can, if not, get another part, replace it, and just move on, man, like, that's it, there's no, you know, um, if you sit on it for too long, then you just end up not doing it, so, um, but yeah, ended up fixing, um, the leak, and I found a solution to the boost pipe touching the manifold, the exhaust manifold, which gets really hot, and, um, yeah, so, hopefully we, um, can take the car out for a bit of a bit of a spin next but um yeah thanks a lot for watching again and i'll see you in the next video